Sipla Limited is marketing Neosurf, a natural surfactant in India. Neosurf is used to restore pulmonary surfactant activity in prematurely born infants suffering from neonatal respiratory distress syndrome. Neosurf is a natural surfactant extract that contains phospholipids and the two hydrophobic surfactants associated proteins, SPP and SPC. Neosurf is manufactured as a suspension containing 27 mg phospholipid per milliliter in 0.1 molar sodium chloride, 1.5 millimolar calcium chloride. Neosurf must be kept frozen or refrigerated during storage. The vials can be stored in the freezer for their entire shelf life or may be refrigerated at any time during its shelf life for periods totaling two weeks without affecting its expiry date. After a total of two weeks at refrigeration temperatures, return the product to a freezer for further storage. See the product monograph for instructions on returning warmed but unopened vials to storage. Neosurf is intended for intratracheal installation with careful patient monitoring by personnel qualified in neonatal intubation and ventilatory management. When properly administered, Neosurf is rapidly absorbed and forms an active phospholipid monolayer at the air tissue interface. This restores surfactant activity, dramatically improves gaseous exchange, and decreases alveolar surface tension. Neosurf has been extensively studied in clinical trials across Canada and has been shown to significantly improve gas exchange and lung compliance in infants with respiratory distress. Positive results, as indicated by a decrease in oxygen requirements and ventilator parameters, are often obtained within the first 5 to 30 minutes after treatment with a single dose. Careful monitoring with appropriate adjustment of ventilatory parameters is imperative during this period. The dosage of Neosurf is 5 milliliters per kilogram birth weight. At 27 milligrams phospholipid per milliliter, the dose is 135 milligrams phospholipid per kilogram birth weight. To administer Neosurf, remove an appropriate volume from storage. Warm the vial or vials to room temperature. Warming can be accomplished by letting a frozen vial stand at room temperature for at least 60 minutes or a refrigerated vial stand for 20 minutes. Alternately, a vial may be warmed in the hand for 10 minutes or in warm water for 5 minutes. These times are approximate. Do not heat Neosurf above body temperature. Once at room temperature, if any precipitate is present, gently swirl the vial until it is evenly dispersed. Use care not to produce too much foam. The homogeneous suspension should have an off-white or light yellow color. After gently mixing, it is normal to see small flecks present. If there is any discoloration or if a marked precipitate persists, do not use the contents of the vial. Other supplies you will need for this procedure include a sterile syringe, a sterile needle, alcohol wipes, a number 5 French feeding tube, and sterile scissors to cut the feeding tube. Neosurf is intended for intratracheal installation after an endotracheal airway has been established. The infant should be suctioned to remove lung secretions and allowed to recover prior to administration of Neosurf. Ensure the endotracheal tube is placed 1 to 2 centimeters below the vocal cords and 1 to 2 centimeters above the carina. Confirmation of endotracheal tube placement by chest x-ray is recommended. Improper placement of the endotracheal tube can be extremely detrimental. Care must be taken not to instill Neosurf down the right main stem bronchus. Neosurf is administered in three bolus aliquots with the infant in three positions. In the supine position, laying on the left side, and laying on the right side. This is done to ensure proper distribution of Neosurf. A single bolus dose may be administered supine in more premature infants who have not yet developed a gag reflex. This will allow less handling of very premature infants. Lift the safety seal from the center of the cap on the Neosurf vial. Wipe the rubber stopper with an alcohol wipe. Insert the needle through the rubber stopper and draw up the required volume for the complete dose of Neosurf into the syringe. 
Remove the needle from the vial. If the total dose is greater than 5 milliliters, a second vial will be required. Repeat this procedure with the second vial to introduce the full dose into the syringe. Disconnect the needle from the syringe. Attach the syringe to the feeding tube. Cut the feeding tube to a length of 5 to 7 centimeters, ensuring that the feeding tube will not project beyond the end of the endotracheal tube. With the infant positioned on the supine side, Disconnect the ventilator and thread the feeding tube into the endotracheal tube and administer the first one-third dose. This is to be given as a single bolus. Remove the feeding tube from the endotracheal tube, ensuring the tip does not become contaminated. Manually ventilate the infant for 30 to 60 seconds with sufficient pressure to obtain good chest expansion. The bag should have an oxygen supply attached and be equipped with a manometer. The infant should be allowed to recover on the ventilator as necessary. The oxygen saturation probe reading should be about 95% prior to delivering the next aliquot. There should be no evidence of neosurf in the endotracheal tube. Repeat the dosing procedure with the last two aliquots, one with the infant laying on the left side and the final aliquot with the infant laying on the right side. Return the infant to the ventilator at the same settings prior to dosing. As an alternative to removing the infant from the ventilator during dosing, use a Y connector that will allow simultaneous ventilation and bolus dosing. Thread the appropriate length of feeding tube through one port of the Y connector to the distal end of the endotracheal tube. Administer one-third of the dose and allow the infant to recover prior to further dosing. As Neosurf may have an immediate effect on lung compliance and oxygenation, Ventilator settings will have to be carefully monitored and adjusted to prevent lung injury. Careful monitoring of the patient for the first hour after Neosurf administration is mandatory. Observe the chest expansion closely and decrease ventilatory pressures accordingly. Failure to do so may result in overexpansion and lung injury. Infants should be monitored by a transcutaneous partial pressure oxygen probe and or oxygen saturation readings. Blood gas measurement should be obtained one hour after dosing. Online pulmonary mechanics measurement may also aid in determining appropriate ventilatory adjustments and endotracheal tube placement. If transient bradycardia or oxygen desaturation occur during dosing, stop the dosing procedure and ensure the patency of the endotracheal tube. Take appropriate actions such as suctioning, hand ventilation to clear the endotracheal tube, replacing a plugged endotracheal tube or increasing the oxygen levels to stabilize the infant. If any patient is in trouble during the dosing procedure, the clinician must take appropriate action to ensure the safety of the patient. Resume the dosing procedure once the infant is stable. If reflux of Neosurf up the endotracheal tube occurs, increase PEEP 1 to 2 centimeters, taking care to avoid overinflating the lungs. If blockage persists, the endotracheal tube may be blocked with mucus or with foam from pleural fluids. If so, suction the infant and possibly replace the endotracheal tube. Ensure the infant is not hypothermic, as this may encourage excess pleural fluids. Bolus administration is more effective at ensuring a proper distribution. Very small aliquots or a slow drip method is not recommended. Neosurf spreads very rapidly and very small amounts may lead to uneven lung distribution and uneven lung compliance. Where there has been a positive response to the first dose, as indicated by a marked decrease in oxygen requirements, as many as three additional doses can be given within the first five days of life, if necessary. The retreatment criteria are a positive response to the initial dose as reflected in oxygen requirements, a gradual rise in oxygen requirements by 10 to 15 percent of the lowest setting achieved since the previous dose. Exclusion of other cardiopulmonary conditions, which may account for increased oxygen requirements, for example, patent ductus arteriosus or pneumothorax. The retreatment regimen is identical to that of the initial dose. Neosurf has been extensively studied in clinical trials with over 5,000 infants in Canada. 
The results of these trials indicate that NeoServe is an effective therapy for infants suffering from respiratory distress syndrome. Additional information on indications, contraindications, warnings, and precautions can be found in the package insert or product monograph.